which flash should you buy? It can be a difficult decision. We're gonna make it easy and go over these retro flashes from about $60 all the way up to more functional workhorse flashes that are a couple hundred dollars. We're featuring Flashpoint flashes here because we've been using that system for most of our career now. They're a much better value than the like Canon or Sony flashes that you can buy. They are the same between Flashpoint and Godox. Those two brand names have equivalent models. So some of these you'll even see some Godox branding on there, but we always choose the Flashpoint version because that gives us American support through Adorama. Adorama is sponsoring this video, but they've only been a sponsor for like less than a year and we've been using the stuff for most of a decade. That's how much we actually love it. Let's start off by talking about fully manual, inexpensive flashes. These add a little kick of light and you know what? I think they're pretty cool too. Let's put this on my Q2, and this will go with any camera that just has a flash mount. So you don't have to worry about that compatibility. And you slide it on like this. This doesn't have the full capability of a big flash, but there's something nice about the simplicity where if you're learning to use flash, you have this dial here, everything is manual, but it's simple as well. It has this just fixed light here. You can't bounce flash or modify it, but it's gonna give you some extra fill light in your photos. If you like reviews like these, be sure to subscribe to our channel. It helps a lot. And you can hit the notification bell to make sure you see when we put out a new video, we'll have plenty of reviews. We're gonna also cover studio lighting, not just flashes. So if you're interested in seeing that, subscribe. Let's do some pictures with and without it so they can see what's happening. So we have these huge windows in our kitchen and it's very backlit. I'll show you how a little flash like this can add some fill flash and balance the light. Before his face is in the shadow and the background is very blown out and after his face is properly lit, a little bit of light can go a long way. Another fun thing about this is that it comes in an array of colors. So if you wanted a different color to match your style, you can get it. It's fun, it's small, it's compact. It's a great deal for 60 bucks. Aside from being practical, when you learn how to control a flash, you can also get more creative with your photos. You can get that hard on-camera flash look that they do in fashion a lot, or you can control your background. So right now I'm going to expose for the background and make it dark, and then add flash on Tony to give this moody, very high-key flash look. This Nikon ZF is like retro cool, but it, it doesn't have an on-camera flash. And I think part of so many of those retro photos is getting that on camera flash look. This Flashback Senior is a little more expensive. It's small enough to fit in your bag, but it unfolds and then kind of unfurls here. And watch, I'll push this red switch and the bulb pops out. And now I'm going to get a more like, I feel like 1930s sort of press photographer look to this thing. It's just so cool. So I'll turn that on and, and let's get a couple of pictures with and without it. powerful. Just like the other flash, I'm dialing manually in the settings on my camera to determine what the background is going to be, like how bright that's going to be. And in this case, I'm choosing to make it dark just so I get the full effect of the flash. You don't have to have it look like it's hard flash. You can use the flash for just a little bit of fill to fill in shadows, or you can make it dominate the photo and actually make a full style out of it. One difference between these two is that the smaller one here is battery powered with triple A batteries. That's kind of convenient because you can just go to any convenience store and get more triple A batteries. This one is USB-C charged. So it takes a little bit to charge, but you don't have to buy any batteries. And for me, I prefer to have everything USB-C charged. There's also a third Flashpoint flashback flash that is so new, we don't even have it yet. And it's sort of like this one in that it has the round metal reflector on it, except it expands more like an aperture does. So maybe that just more closely matches your style. Now we'll go on and talk about the more function over form flashes and more traditional modern form factors that uh, can be a little more powerful, a little more controllable, but aren't quite as cool looking. Before we get into these flashes with more features and more versatility, I want to introduce you to something I always have in my back pocket, and that is our how to flash guide. And this will teach you how to use your flash creatively, how to control your settings and how to get better pictures using your flash. And we even talked about how to balance lighting, use flash at events, use TTL mode. So check it out. Go to the link in the description. This is a manual flash and this is 
$65. So we're still in good bargain territory, but you get a ton of features when you move to this. The first thing I want to mention is it's a fully manual flash. So it has this one pin and that just means it doesn't have TTL or other features where it's going to automatically change some settings, but you can learn how to do it manually. One of the most valuable things to me is that it has this pivoting head. So you can pivot the head and turn it. And this can give you more versatility with your light because you can bounce it. So you saw on these fixed flashes that we were using before, it's always direct flash and that's good, but it can also be harsh. When you have a head that you can move, you can bounce it off of different subjects like your ceiling or your wall. And that actually increases the size of your light source and makes it softer. We teach you how to do that in our lighting guide, actually. Why don't you show them how it's done now? Okay. We're in our living room. The light isn't really great. Tony's backlit right now, but I want to show you how being able to move where the flash is pointing is really important. So I'll do a direct picture of Tony with direct flash like we've been doing. And you can see that there's really shiny highlights on him. It's, it's balanced light, but it's not the most flattering light. Now I'm going to point the flash at the wall and the ceiling, and that actually becomes the light source. It's going to bounce the light back down on him and be softer. So I can turn the head of the flash. Tony, could you look off towards the TV a little bit? And you can see that that looks like there's a strobe over there or something, and it's because I'm bouncing the light. If you're at an event or something and you have unflattering multiple light sources, like in this room where it's like warm and cool and all over the place, you can also bounce off a white ceiling and get a white light overhead. So let's try that. You can turn around and bounce behind you if you have a wall behind you, and that can become the light source. And look at the huge difference. So you can see all of the different light sources and how you can control your light so much more once you have a pivoting head. Another cool feature is that you can pull out this diffuser here and have this card. And if I'm pointing it at the ceiling, it's still going to bounce some light here and give Tony a catch light in his eyes. This is also the first flash we're showing that supports high speed sync. And high speed sync allows you to use the flash at high shutter speeds, fast shutter speeds, something like one one thousandths or one two thousandths of a second. That's not so much about capturing action as it is about being able to use a fast lens like f1.2, blur the background outside on a bright day. Now, today it's actually snowing outside, and I don't think we want to go outside in the snow. So I'll take a picture with the outside as the background. And uh, first I'll do it just in regular sync mode without using high-speed sync. You can see everything is just overexposed, including the background. But with high-speed sync, I can use a faster shutter speed here above the camera's normal sync speed, which would normally be limited to like 1 200th or 1 250th of a second. So I'm going to be able to go up to 1 1,000th of a second, turn on high speed sync, and now I'm going to be able to shoot with a dark background. I'm so glad you're not making me go outside. <laughs> I don't want to be out there. This $60 flash also has a zoom head in it. It can zoom in and out to match the focal length that you're using and it expresses it in the back in 35 millimeter terms. What this does is it allows it to operate more efficiently. So if I zoom all the way into 100 millimeters, I can zoom the head here to match. And then it's casting the light in a narrow beam that will only light up 105 millimeter equivalent here. That means that the flash can operate at a lower power output. That means that I can recycle faster and take my next flash quicker. And generally it's a really good thing to do. It also lets you just project a narrow spotlight if you need that for a special effect. So I'm going to step back a little bit, get kind of a cool shot of Chelsea shooting down the table. So I had the flash head zoomed all the way back, which is what you would get on one of those manual flashes that don't have the flash head. And let's take a picture of Chelsea and see how much light reaches her. You can see some flash is reaching her but she's kind of dim. So I will zoom this head into 105 millimeters, matching my current focal length. By zooming to match the focal length, the actual exposure went up by like a full stop, which is a lot. That's like half the amount of light is required to properly illuminate her at this distance. This means that as you're zooming, you're going to be coming in, in here and uh, punching the zoom button and matching it up and down. That could be a little laborious. In just a second, we'll look at flashes that 
automate that process of zooming to match your lens. Now I want to introduce you to the concept of guide numbers, what are known as GNs. The guide number is a measurement of how far away the flash can illuminate a subject. Those previous flashes that you saw had guide numbers of like 46 feet, which means they could properly illuminate somebody 46 feet away. That seems great. This one has a guide number of 196 feet, so we can reach much further. That's the combination of a couple of things. One is that it has a bigger battery. It can just put out more light. But the more sophisticated part is being able to use that zoom so we can narrow the beam of light to 200 millimeters and really illuminate a faraway subject for those times when you need it. So if you are assessing flashes, check out the GN for each particular flash, but no, that's not just a measurement of the flash output, but how well it shapes that beam of light. Do you think it could actually reach from 200 feet away and get your subjects? Like, I, You know, I haven't actually tested it, but uh, I mean, you want to try it? I, I we don't have 200 feet, but maybe if you just go to the windows, let's see. Okay. We'll crank this all the way up. It's perfectly illuminated. You, yeah, it's got some crazy reach. It's like the paparazzi flash. That's crazy. This flash uses AA batteries, and that can be convenient because these are accessible everywhere. You can just take them out and throw them away and put new ones in. But you might want a rechargeable lithium ion battery. Flashpoint does offer this in both AA and lithium ion versions. So pick the type of battery that you prefer. Up until this point, all of the flashes that we have shown, you can put on just about any camera and they're gonna work. But now that we're going into these fully automatic flashes, you have to choose the specific flash for your camera. So we have a Sony flash on a Sony camera. The good thing about these fully automatic ones is that you don't have to worry about a few things. We talked about changing the zoom on your flash to meet the zoom of your lens. Well, now when you zoom your lens, it's gonna automatically change the zoom of your light. Another automatic feature is called TTL, and that's through the lens metering. That means you don't have to always go back and adjust your light. It's gonna read the scene and adjust the light for you. So you can bounce your flash and it will adjust the exposure. I don't mind using manual flash. I prefer it sometimes, but if I'm shooting a wedding or an event where the situation is constantly changing, I'm bouncing and shooting straight, then I absolutely need TTL. Let me show you what I'm talking about and I'll put Tony in a few scenes and just keep everything the same so that you can see how it's automatically adjusting. So first, let's get you backlit, Tony. Okay. And I'm gonna shoot at 24 millimeters, and then I'll zoom in, and it adjusted the light for me. And now I'm gonna have you move into a darker scene, so come over okay. here. I'm gonna get a 24 millimeter shot close of Tony, and now I will move farther away, and it matches the exposure. I can zoom in and get far away, and again, the exposure looks exactly the same. So like Tony said, it's not a bad thing to use a manual flash, but if you're going to be moving quickly, changing lightings and scenes, you might want the convenience of your flash reading the scene and doing most of the work for you. I'll do those same shots in manual so you can see the difference. So I'm close at 24 millimeters and I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to get a little farther and then I will get farther away and zoom. And you can see that once I get farther away and zoom, the light falls off and the exposure is not the same. If you wanna take your flash off camera and move it somewhere else, you'll have to get a remote trigger and this allows you to control your flash output from here. Uh, and the other thing is your flash has to be wireless, obviously, because it has to communicate through a distance. So I'm gonna take a picture of Tony with my flash over here and I just wanna show you my setup real quick. I put it on a stand and it's just clamped in here and I'm pointing it at him from the side to get some dramatic side lighting. I also have a light modifier down there because once you get into modifying your light, you can really control it. But first I'll just show you what it looks like on a stand since that's a more affordable option. And then I'm gonna change my flash, change up my light a little bit and just get him from this angle. This is a little more flattering. Or I can take it and bounce it off a wall if I want softer light on him or bounce it on the ceiling. So that gives me some dramatic side lighting from a bigger light source like the wall. And now I'm gonna put a soft box on so you can see how much you can control and modify the light with some accessories. 
So from that, you can see once you have these features that you're paying a little more for, you have more control over where you put the light, how much light you have, where you're bouncing it from, and you can introduce more creativity with your photos. So if you're wondering what it costs to upgrade to these features, it doubles the price. So the other one was 64. This is like 124. So I think it's worth the upgrade. Of course, Flashpoint offers a variety of different options for you. You can get this in AA batteries. You can get it with the lithium ion battery that we're using. They also have a brand new version with the lithium ion battery and a switch that goes between manual and TTL and a continuous modeling light. Pick the one that suits your uses. If this seems too big for your camera bag, they also have a miniature version that is smaller, has most of the same features, but not quite as much power. The ultimate flash point on camera flash are the new round head versions. This is the Lion X model. And you can see not only does it have a round head, which creates a more attractive catch light in the eye, I think a more natural catch light. It kind of looks like a sun instead of being square like other flashes, but it has a magnetic head so you can snap on a variety of different accessories. How cool is that? I can put on this snoot and this focuses the light to a narrow beam, which is perfect if you just wanted to highlight something on the wall or using it off camera as a hair light. They also have barn doors that snap right on and allow me to control exactly where the light is going to be. And the fact that it's magnetic makes it so quick and easy. They have colored gels and you might throw one of these colored gels inside of this in order to have the flash white balance match the yellow incandescent lights or the slightly bluish LED lights, depending on the environment or use them off camera. And just like for a special effect, throw a little green in there, use the green light as rim lighting and add a little bit of a special color effect. And of course the round flash supports all the features that you've seen before. Like you can use it on camera to trigger other flashes or wirelessly. It has TTL and high speed sync. Everything we've shown you today has been Flashpoint Flash. That's what we've been using for years. Adorama supports Flashpoint, like that is an Adorama brand. So of course you should buy it from Adorama. They're the world's best store for creators, for everything from cameras to lenses to flashes. So head to this link at Adorama. That way they just know that you heard about them through us. While you're there, you can probably pick a package that has some free stuff and you can definitely collect some VIP points Every time you buy something, they give you VIP points and you can use those VIP points to buy stuff later on. Yeah, and just to remind you, Adorama is our sponsor. They're sponsoring this video, but we've been using Flashpoint flashes for years before they ever sponsored us. So we do actually love them. If you want to know more about studio lighting with big fancy lighting setups, we have a separate video that will cover studio lighting. And we also have our How to Use Flash video training series that shows you all the techniques that you need to get fantastic light, soft light, hard light, directional light, whatever you can imagine. You know what else? It comes on an SD card. So once you've put your series on your computer, you can stick this in your camera and have an extra SD. Or just stream it if you want. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Bye.